hi, uh, dear Money Lab uh, uh, viewers. <laughs> you, you should now be able to see us. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, uh, you should be able to see us and the floating key behind us. Um, we are not that far away from the supermarket uh, uh, kind of studio in a small stug snuggly space called Trust. Um, and we're going to Schöneberg in Schöneberg and we're going to talk about um, trust. Oh, yeah. And Callum, uh, as part of the uh, topic, Maybe of... say your name first. OK, sorry. My name is Arthur. Uh, I'm one of the co-organizers of trust. And I'm Callum. Uh, Cal I'm the other co-organizer. Yeah, Callum. And I have a scheme today. Yes. Callum is represented by the orb next to me. Um, um, I don't know if you can see, he's moving his mouth. You should be able to see a bit of mouth, movement, mouth based movement on my mouth. Yes, you could, it's, it's a bit like, a, like the movie Flubber. I'm uh, uh, the, you know, have you seen Flubber? I'm not sure where this metaphor is going. I don't know. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> uh, so you want to do this? Yeah. Okay, so you, you start reading. We're, we're doing a little intro. Since the topic is uh, narratives and infrastructures, Callum was very uh, persistent that there were no uh, narratives. So we're now doing a little narrative at the, uh, at the beginning. To prove that we do narratives. Yes, exactly. Okay, so you, you should start. The post-capitalist Hydra has a huge body with nine heads, all immortal. As fast as one head is smashed, there grows up two. It's going to have to start with a head. What comes after the head, or what happens when you grow so many that one can't dominate anymore? A body without head or an organism with many. Guillotines for organizations and org charts with more heads than a hydra. Okay. See, Arthur wasn't so bad. Yeah, I mean... I... Okay. So, um... Yeah, uh, we've, we've already talked about uh, who we are. Um, Ella Kagel introduced us uh, with Joanna Pope as well, who is unfortunately extremely jet lagged right now and hopefully watching this from uh, under her duvet cover. In her dreams. In her dreams, she's watching this. Uh, we wanna uh, give a huge shout out to Joanna. Uh, without her, this project uh, wouldn't be possible. Um, and... Um, yeah, we have quite a bit to get through today. Yeah, so um, we're gonna talk about trust, and if questions come up as we're talking, please feel free to post them in the chat. We'll be looking at both the YouTube and the Twitch. Yeah, um, and we'll yeah we can have a conversation if there are things that aren't clear or if questions come up. And to start, I'm gonna set the scene, the context from which trust emerges. So material culture is fundamental to being a homo sapien. Art, design, the stories we tell, the metaphors we use become the basis of realities. And, and these art and design practices create and build imaginative ways of imagining society and creating new possibility spaces. But in the 20th century and through modernism, there, began, um, there was this universalizing practice where everything became decontextualized. Design and art was removed from its social context. Um, looking towards the 1960s avant-garde, uh, we want to avoid the ways that their attempts to um, conceive of new collaborative possibilities and ways of working together and, and multidisciplinary creative practice that brought together um, science, technology, with art and design. Uh, we really don't want to do the same that they did in kind of purifying out the political and and having the uh, the work based on a kind of unviable definition of the public, this kind of vague and abstract notion of the public, um, which just produces this kind of like universal effect. So we feel there's an unavoidable need to reunite economics, politics, and the social imaginary, to consider inclusive labor relations, redistributive economics, 
and put humans back into relation with natural worlds. The contemporary art market and speculative design, which are kind of the two contexts which Arthur and I had our kind of education in, mm -hmm. um, are stuck in discursive loops where the political is rendered as an aesthetic. Um, people are very good at talking about problems, but less good at thinking about alternatives or making proposals about alternatives. And so from this, trust emerges the many-headed hydra, um, heads pulling in different directions, but with a single body, a single heartbeat, and a shared metabolism. So trust, we describe as a collective project for the research, development, and maintenance of shared infrastructures and imaginaries. We support the emergence of creative practices that use critique to create narratives and aesthetics that are tied to infrastructure and their externalities. We're interested in play for how it provides creative practitioners with the means to engage with, test, and develop technologies, economics, and public policies. We see games as low-risk environments that provide affordances for emergent collective behaviors while being open to unexpected outcomes. And our ambition is to link publics and kind of rethink publics in a grounded and situated way around groups. Um, yeah, so linking publics and value to situated groups and contexts. We start from 25 Klickstrasse in Berlin Schöneberg. This is the kind of basis of our project and our community and the, the group of people that all of our work is done with and for. And the project is about spawning collective research, communication, tools, and ownership models, which we'll go into in more detail now. So uh, yeah, thank you for that uh, con context, Callum. And thank you again for forcing me to read the, the thing. Um, I'm, as Callum said, we're uh, in a space in Schöneberg. Um, we um, uh, took over the space in 2017. And uh, how it works is, or it, how it used to work, uh, is that it's a, uh, uh, um, there's a public program and it's a, a space for lectures, workshops, and reading groups that is funded by a shared workspace. Uh, of people that work together uh, uh, from from this address, um, we we set out quite early to always have good documentation and uh, kind of good communication of what happens in the space, and the space kind of was designed in that way as well, uh, almost becoming like a TV studio for uh, streams like this, um, and these were kind of the first steps towards maybe this monster that you're seeing in front of you right now uh and for bad and for worse for good and for worse um, um and the project um in at Klugstrasse also includes a library uh, called the cybernetics library which is maintained by sam hart which is a uh the berlin version of a uh, new york library at prime produce um which uh is part of the infrastructure here um we uh, also uh, quite early made sure that our website uh, had all the videos on it. And we started like building this web presence and started sharing maybe some of the discourse that was going on here. Um, that was kind of the first step of trust, uh, I would say. Um, as a next step, uh, we started uh, thinking about, uh, okay, what if there now is this network around trust and people working from here, how can we facilitate collaborative research between uh, all these individuals and their interesting uh, practices, ranging from ecology to design, to research, to developers, uh, and uh, much more. And uh, we started a residency program um, where uh, a number of invited people would work from the workspace and research uh, around specific topics. The first one was on uh, fully automated luxury blank, blank uh, playing with the idea of fully automated luxury communism. Uh, that's also how we met Joanna for the first time, which is a nice uh, uh, 
little origin story. Um, and we um, also investigated the topic of the European stack in one residency, which is about this newfound claim for digital sovereignty uh, by Europe and the, uh, let's say, say the least problematic colonial tendencies that are expressed there, but also trying to problematize. Yeah, problematize those colonial tendencies, but also kind of point towards um, are there any good futures? that could be implied by this, uh, this move uh, from the European uh, Commission to want to develop their own digital infrastructures. Um, we're gonna jump through this stuff pretty quickly to be able to uh, fit it into the time slot. So buckle up. Um, the next uh, thing we're gonna talk about quickly is we did a research group called the Trucking and Labor Research Group, where six researchers uh, looked into uh, trucking automation, decarbonization, and uh, uh, digitization, and basically looked at speculative proposals of how uh, new mechanics or ideas could be developed, speculative design projects, um, to help uh, um, truckers and other workers in logistical infrastructure uh, navigate these uh, shifts of the industry. And all this stuff is on our website if you're interested. Um, and we also started playing more with the, uh, the stream formats and kind of with our interest in infrastructures and our interest in uh, 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 game, uh, started uh, thinking about the streams as potential ways to explore uh, uh, game mechanics as part of them. And this uh, show called Plotting uh, went on for, I don't know how long, how long? So like two months. Two months. Um, with uh, Steph Oltreu. Um and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and it kind of set the another step uh, towards uh, spawning um, uh, social communication formats. And it's important to note here that uh, until now, most of the activity of trust was around uh, the uh, physical space. Uh, and uh, then the pandemic uh, hit, and it was pretty clear that our physical space was no longer viable as the main hub for uh, this research and discourse. And um, um, as, as it became very clear that we need to find an alternative. And uh, what we did was we started a, um, uh, a Discord a chat forum, um, which now I would say is the uh, main uh, hub for what goes on at Trust. Um, it, there are many that have done this, especially in the podcast communities and uh, things like that. There are a lot of discords, but um, we've explored it in our own way. Um, and something that was always important to us was that um, we also are not dependent on too many uh, other platforms. Of course, Discord is in itself a, uh, a Silicon Valley startup, and we'll talk more about that in the end. But we set up our own uh, membership and um, a payment system. And basically, as it works today, um, everything kind of uh, 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 gravitates around the Discord. And uh, the Discord itself is mainly focused on having time-based events, which are uh, reading groups, um, um, uh, Twitch streams, which uh, originate in the Discord, um, and a new format called Sandbox. And I'll explain those quickly. Um, the reading group we are doing uh, is led by uh, Joanna Pope um, and happens every two weeks. Uh, it's for uh, Discord members only. And texts are selected based on our six or five research themes. Um, and often people from the uh, Discord join as co host and it's a discussion. Uh, um, a discussion-based format. Um, we also um, do have done a, a more uh, stream experiments, including uh, me, uh, among other things. And um, we're more and more interested in the idea of modeling economic um, mechanisms inside the streams themselves. This stream, for example, is uh, has a game show element in it, uh, and you can spin to win uh, I would say ridiculous prizes. Uh, and it was a way for us to uh, test uh, interactivity um, uh, and uh, yeah, economic mechanisms uh, as part of kind of 
um, building out more collective social formats. Um, and then third, one thing we're working on right now, and there's been only four so far, is to do a completely Discord native format, which is only in voice chat and um, uh, text chat, where people from our Discord present their work uh, and there's a discussion around it. And um, what we aim to do with this is really try out that people uh, just sign up. And uh, this happens on a, a, a kind of self-going uh, community-initiated scale. Um, um, yeah, those are three experiments in uh, social and collective um, formats that we're doing. And we've also started adding uh, bots. This is the uh, cybernetics library bot, which was developed by Sean La Pham. And uh, it's also in the Money Lab Discord, uh, actually, since I think a few days. Um, and it's a way to activate the books that are in the library. It has different functions, and we're trying to build that out more. And we're also interested in the idea of making these bots characters more and more uh, if we can. So that's everything I have on this part. From the experiments we were doing with Discord and with Twitch, we came to understand there was a need for new tools and communication platforms. Discord is still an extractive American web platform and Amazon owns Twitch, um, but we're not able to kind of cut our reliance yet. We're interested in ways of pulling people from the platforms that we're using into new infrastructure. And we've started doing some experiments in collaboration with different partners, building digital tools that enable new forms of collective research and new types of social experiences. So this is um, a project called Milieu, which we originally produced um, for HKV. And it's an events and exhibition platform that was specifically made for um, the Shape of a Practice, which was part of their Anthropocene curriculum concluding event. And it included 100 case studies um, from different research groups around the world that are researching the, anth the Anthropocene. And we built, again, a kind of online game for um, negotiating the classification of information. Um, you could pick up the different pieces of the archive, move them around the map, put things into new constellations with each other. And also each piece of information had a lifespan. So after it was viewed 10 times, it would respawn in the center and somebody else would have to think about where to put it. Um, this is again, kind of ambitions of the project that we're continuing to develop um, as an open source project that already has been used by iBeam in New York and the Post Rational Foundation. Um, and our ambition is to think about what a shared infrastructure for cultural institutions and creative practice could look like. Um, we don't think it's necessary for every project space, art, art institution and museum to create digital solutions to shared problems and rather should find ways of sharing code um, and sharing platforms that also present an alternative to the Silicon Valley corporations. And um, Milieu is our first uh, attempt at doing this, and we're continuing to develop it going forward. And um, we're also bringing this way of approaching infrastructure to the Avatar project, which Arthur can talk about. Yeah, so the project is, I would say, not only led, but heavily dependent and carried by the sweat of uh, GVN, uh, who is developing, um, um, who's, who's behind uh, us right now. Behind us right now. He's in front of us. Technically in front. Uh, yes, but uh, <laughs> very much uh, the 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 most important person in this project. Uh, and it's uh, it's about um, experimenting with non-human and collective representations of uh, in stream formats. But it's also about, as I said earlier, about the experimentation with. Uh, tokens with with uh, game mechanics with uh, new ways of of building uh, interactive formats uh, using unreal engine 
and also around placemaking yeah. and creating a social environment, a 3D virtual social environment for live streams. Mm -hmm. I think that's well, better than I said it. Almost. Uh, <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> uh, yeah. This project is called Signet, which is by Black Swan, which I'll talk about in a moment, and with the designer Leif Benkeda. Benkeda. And Signet is a digital tool that facilitates decentralized data governance, common ownership, and revenue sharing for creative communities. It's a multi-voting app that allows uh, voters to distribute voting credits across a range of proposals. And it's kind of responding to a need at trust specifically for there to be governance layers on how resources and opportunities are distributed and to um, use a multi-voting system to kind of get beyond this one vote, one person blocker. Um, and we're also planning to build a bot that can bring aspects of the voting process into our Discord community and eventually whatever platform we end up using. Which brings us to the next point um, of uh, uh, collective ownership. Um, I think that um, we have this larger goal that as we're starting to figure out more and more stuff we're doing uh, and have more and more projects and uh, hopefully have more membership fees to allocate, uh, we are have for a while and uh, are looking at ways to uh, uh, structure the governance, uh, maintenance of these projects and how we distribute the funds in a... Uh, democratic way um, and um, the Black Swan team which Callum is part of has been running some experiments in that direction so maybe you can talk about that. So Black Swan is a collective with Laura Lotti and Penny Rafferty. We're going to talk more about the findings of our research tomorrow at 5 30 as part of Money Lab but to give um, a bit of context Black Swan aims to rethink the ways that resources are distributed within the art world and to um, create a collective fund governed by creative practitioners. And in January, as part of the Daowo um, series, which we were very thankful to be supported by Further Field, the Goethe Institute, and Serpentine Galleries, um, we tested three different decision-making mechanisms within a working group of 10 trust members. Um, we tested quadratic voting, a multi-voting system. We tested uh, one person, one vote with emojis um, that worked directly in the trust discord. And we also tested a lottery. And we were very interested to find from the feedback that participants preferred quadratic voting they preferred having the ability to express multiple preferences for things. Um, they didn't like the lottery, uh, I think, partially because of the reduction of agency it gave over decision making. Um, and kind of based on these findings, we're building Signet to, to bring these insights directly to the governance tool that Trust will use. And eventually, um, many other communities will be able to use as we open source it. And yeah, so we'll talk more about that with Laura Lati tomorrow at 5.30. Um, so um, as part of, as, as a kind of result of those experiments and this kind of ambition for giving over stake, I would say, of trust to people that are financially uh, contributing, um, uh, we have a number of aims for the next steps of uh, um, um, of trust, and um, the steps, the the aims are basically to well, this is the most basic one to cover the operational cost of the space and infrastructure, um, to uh, remunerate members for their work uh, put into projects, and this is already happening um, in but. The uh, accounting for this is proving to be quite difficult, and we hope to find ways to make the accounting easier, uh, to automate some of these processes, and uh, to make sure that there is clear attribution um, as part of that. 
Um, we want to create a data commons to pool the infrastructures, imaginaries, and metadata related to projects, and generally the knowledge produ produced within trust um, as a kind of uh, shared resource that is owned by the uh, uh, members. And we want to build governance mechanisms which can make all active members collective owners of trust uh, long term. And this, um, of course, all sounds great. Um, and I think we, uh, we are really looking forward to discussing specifically these things uh, with the Money Lab audience. Um, we will, um, at the end of this, we, we will kind of uh, talk about the mechanism or some of the tensions we have in mind that we need to be explored. But and we will uh, publish a, uh, um, a kind of work in progress document on drafts on this, and we'll uh, send these also to the trust community for feedback at a later stage. Um, but um, there are certain risks that come with this, uh, with this idea of uh, a shared governance and ownership models. And uh, we don't, I mean, this is pretty far uh, back, but um, there, the idea of a practice-based interest group that uh, defends its own interest and builds up assets um, has happened many times before. And there is this tension between um, internal versus external community interest. How do we balance the idea of, uh, of uh, defending the interest of our members with the idea of building infrastructure that can be used by others and be useful to others? And um, um, a, a very good example of this is also in Berlin, how the uh, collectively owned uh, um, property uh, companies uh, now are uh, voting against public interest in um, 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 uh, new regulations for the property market, for example. There is this, there's a precedent that organizations, even if they are collectively owned, do not have any uh, connection to public interest uh, uh, as part of their kind of driving force. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very interested in, in, in looking at how to do that. We already now, um, have ways to increase uh, representation within the uh, trust member group um but there and i think that the way we will approach it is uh, on the basis of licensing open source licensing or certain permissive licenses especially looking at things like the copy for left license developed by telecommunisten provide it potentially interesting examples on how to both kind of uh uh, develop projects that d are in the interest of a community while allowing uh, a somewhat um, permissive membrane to outside and certain institutions um, that uh, are in line with this idea of uh, public infrastructure, shared infrastructure. And uh, yeah, so that's one of the tensions. And it's also worth pointing out that the these tensions, um, the internal versus community uh, or the internal versus uh, public interest, uh, access versus exclusion, and some more will be discussed tomorrow at the uh, panel, the two hour social tokens panel, uh, which will also happen here on our Twitch and on the Money Lab uh, YouTube. Another um, tension that exists when designing these systems that we are kind of struggling with um, or uh, navigating, I would say, um, is the uh, idea of access versus ex exclusion. We have currently a pay to enter member model, uh, which funds a large part of what we do. Um, and that's how you, you basically, we give people access to the Discord uh, in return for uh, a monthly subscription. Um, the, the problem is that you get a, a, only people that are economically stable or have a, a guaranteed economic uh, an income to be part of your community. So what we're doing now is um, giving uh, free memberships to people that ask and basically say that they're not in an economic position, but- No questions asked. There's no questions asked uh, uh, here. Um, but I, we, we also have to, as the project potentially scales up, there are, how do we deal with this issue? As you bring in governance yeah. to collective funds, yeah. then how do you negotiate different ways of contributing to a project without false incentives or like incentivizing certain types of behavior that ultimately don't contribute to the project. 
Um, and then uh, this is maybe one of the hardest ones is when do we cut our umbilical cord to uh, Discord and Twitch? Um, I think that we, we very clearly, uh, we, we know that A, the platform um, uh, that we use currently are, uh, you know, they're, they're part of financial structures which we can fundamentally not support uh, on an ideological level. Uh, they also are designed for very general audiences in mind. They are designed in a, under a universalizing principle, and we can't actually customize any of the functionality. And what we need instead is a platform or platforms or protocols that tie the tools uh, for the collective development of social imaginaries to shared ownership and decision-making uh, models as part of the platform itself. And they need to integrate data commons. They need to... Uh, uh, enable customization and they need to enable play with the tools themselves and what we're kind of uh, poking at here is the need for either the blockchain space to become much more uh e easy to uh accessible uh, <laughs> much more accessible <laughs> or we need uh to develop our own stuff or we need to work with people to develop uh basically this for trust which is a uh, a combination of events-based chat, which is uh, uh, similar to the Discord. There are uh, dates and people discuss and a stream and there are different social formats. We need some kind of video integration. We need uh, bots and games. We need a data commons that is collectively owned or governed by the uh, members. We need decision-making tools and we need simplified accounting uh, to make sure that people can be paid for their contributions or rewarded in some way. Also to cut down the costs of accounting and bureaucracy. Yeah, the, the maintenance cost of this whole thing. And um, I think this is kind of a good uh, last slide for where we are right now. We are basically in the, in the we are running a, I would say somewhat successful, uh, at least at its for its scale. There's about 120, uh, active paying members and around, I would say, 200 in total uh, that are part of this. Um, we're doing a bunch of stuff. And now we we are in the process of formalizing a lot of the ideas of shared ownership, uh, governance, and uh, 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 community ownership. And I think that as a next step, we uh, we hope to have much more uh, conversations around this as part of the, uh, the trust uh, uh, Discord, and we're doing these uh, also uh, these two more uh, uh, events during the um, um, during the Money Lab conference. Um, there are some questions that have been coming in. Um, okay, so um, I think do you want to go Twitch first or YouTube first? There were some good questions on YouTube that we can start with. Yeah. Okay, I'll read them out. I'd like to hear more about milieu. How many versions have you made? Where can we see them? Is it currently uh, available for people to use? Do you want me to answer that? Well, we've made three versions. Yes. One for Hakeve's The Shape of a Praxis, one for the Post-Rational Foundation, and one for iBeam. Um, and in terms of seeing them, I think the Hakeve one is offline now. Um, we can share a link to the Post-Rational Foundation, mm -hmm. and if the iBeam one is still online, I'm not sure we can also share it. It's not, we're still in the process of documenting it. Um, we have limited time resources, <laughs> and everything is, uh, uh, yeah. We're in the process of trying to make it more available. Yeah. If you'd be interested in using it, send us an email at info at trust.support, and we can get back to you about it. Yeah, I think the the idea is to make it available as a a, a general purpose uh, kind of spatialized middleware, uh, um, and um, um, so that kind of is a spatialized version of uh, different chats or uh, can be used for group chats or uh, conferences to kind of spatialize the experience. Um, and we're now working on scoping out which th which kind of protocols. Uh, chat protocols and video uh, services 
do we want or need to be compatible with? And we want to offer a bunch of open source or decentralized versions as part of that. And kind of, uh, and what's interesting about um, Milieu, which we didn't mention, is that um, it works on image based input only. Uh, so you basically can customize everything and you just upload uh, images of all the avatars, of the maps. And uh, I, I think, or we think, this is a, a, a good way to kind of allow smaller communities or uh, fan communities or whatever to be able to p build their own worlds. Um, okay, the next is, uh, do you, how do you find community authority in your community pooling around specific people? despite attempts to share it widely. Um, I think we have quite distinct role division on, like there are paid facilitators within trust. And then there is, I mean, I think Ruth uh, mentioned uh, the, what is the, the structurelessness? Uh, the tyranny of structurelessness. It's not that bad, but I mean. Well, I mean, it's not a decentralized project right yeah. now. It's, we're, our goal is to lead towards decentralization or towards the distribution of decision making and um, governance and ownership. But at the moment, it's very much decided by me, Arthur, and Joanna for things regarding the Discord. And then all of the sub projects that we do involve collaborators um, who have agency within those projects, but maybe not towards the whole project that at it, in its current formation. But this is what we're aiming towards. Mm. So there's two questions from the Twitch chat as well. One is on if we tried Mastodon. I think I poked around with it. Um, Aaron, would you recommend it as something we should look more into? I think a, a next step is also, uh, we started with this, but it, I think it would also be something good to share, is like start comparing maybe doing a little report um, on the different available tooling for exactly uh, what we have on screen right now. Um, it, it, it's, it seems like what we actually need is a accessible kind of middleware UI layer combining a bunch of existing good ideas uh, in a way that like pulls them together. Um, that would be my, my intuitive Yes, but we need to do more research on this, um, um, especially on uh, decentralized uh, chat protocols, on um, 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 uh, decentralized video uh, streaming, and also uh, uh, about timing when to cut off the umbilical cord uh, to the uh, life-giving yet slightly strangling malnourishing uh, 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 platforms uh, that we're so reliant on and are streaming on right now. There's an unfortunate feature of Silicon Valley <laughs> platforms that they work well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how to ensure that whatever alternative we offer is accessible. Um, and accessibility was something that was also interesting with regards to the Milieu project because when we designed it at first, we were just trying to get the interaction that we wanted. Um, and it wasn't very accessible. And then with iBeam, there was a, a real emphasis on thinking about how to meet accessibility requirements, um, which is more the direction we want to take things going forward. Mm -hmm. um, there's another question. Do you see trust scaling as a single entity uh, or maybe uh, stay with small local chapters, which might end up sharing infrastructure? I mean, this is a great question and something we discuss a lot. Um, I think that we see trust as uh, part of a potential network of other, and I wouldn't say, I mean, spaces here, we would mean with digital spaces, so they don't need to be all bound by the same local context, while many might be, that share infrastructure um, and digital infrastructure or technical infrastructure, and then have their own kind of governance, data commons and uh, systems, or often their own cultures or narratives or lore as part of these uh, uh, digital, uh, 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 yeah, uh, I don't know what to call them. Digital communes is something we've used. We throw out a lot of words all the time <laughs> and have a lot of internal dialogue about the best words to use. Yeah. Um, but also just thinking about the ways that shared stories and means of representation form the basis of different social groups 
and thinking about how actually people could have a stake in these in these canons or in these like shared mythologies that they also own and govern um, is something that's interesting to us. And so not thinking of trust as a singular entity, but rather something that could share its tools and approaches with other groups that share similar interests interests or would like the features, but uh, maybe don't share the stories. Uh, I also think that uh, some, one thing that is interesting to this point of uh, if it's part of a network, um, there is the um, the idea of executional theory. And if we have start building these different institutions or whatever we want to call them, digital communes, uh, uh, what is the substrate uh, between them? And can they similar to, similarly to the goal that we have for public institutions, pooling money into shared res uh, resources, what do the mechanisms look like for, uh, yeah, sharing research, uh, research uh, uh, um, development time and uh, funds between these different uh, uh, institutions themselves? And um, I think that is a super interesting question, and um, that is all part of the next step. Uh, and it goes it's back to this, the issue of access and exclusion and internal and external community interests. Yeah. Um, are there any more questions? Um, we have about 15 minutes. I think we can cut over to the Money Lab team at some point as well. But um, yeah, if anyone else has questions, do we want to talk about anything else? Um, please join us. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Check out our website. There's more more information there. Um, we have a mailing list. Um, there are links to our email address there and to join the Discord. Do you want to talk about what goes on on the newsletter? What goes on in the newsletter? Well, we we send out what goes. Ah. On. Well, we had this newsletter. I mean, it's well, a pretty nice newsletter. It's a pretty good newsletter. I think it's one of our better things. So we kind of started as a newsletter, which we didn't talk about. <laughs> we we're just a newsletter. Yeah, we were about some nice links. Yeah, we were a link list uh, in the uh, 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 in the beginning. Uh, Trust has been many things. Yes. Here, uh, okay, Gnargle says, protocols are institutions and every protocol shapes the sort of communication that can facilitate. So the stack is, a, is about as important as it gets. This is exactly the point yes. that we were also trying to make at the beginning, which is that there's a need to think about new socio-political and economic structures, but the the distribution mechanisms that we have, whether it's the contemporary art white cube, speculative design, or a Silicon Valley social media company, they all shape what this possibility can be and reduce its potential. And so we're interested in tying um, the protocols of communication to the content of what's being communicated to build more equ equitable economic relations. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good ending. Uh, a good ending uh, sentence. Um, I think we should. Um, I, I think, think we're done. I think we're done. I'm gonna ask the Money Lab team uh, uh, if they want to switch over. Um, while they do, if there are any more questions, what people should join trust. Um, I think. Um, I think it's. Right now, it's two two groups that are interested. It's well, there's like ways of joining. Yeah. There's subscribing to the newsletter where you can find out about what we're doing and stay involved and interested and hear about other opportunities to participate. Whereas the Discord, I think that it's hard to onboard people to Discord who haven't used Discord before. Um, but we have six research channels. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of somewhat shaping the discussion around certain themes. The first being play and active forms, which is looking at games, simulation, but also this idea of moving beyond um, objects to think about verbs and systems and um, 
and somebody is using the game mechanics in the Twitch. Yeah, trying. Sadly, to... there's no roll this week. Um, so yeah, play in active forms. We have climate. We have labor. New stack. World building and aesthetics. Um, and two channels, one uh, like local channels, one for Berlin and one for London. Yeah, and then we have uh, temporary channels, uh, which are around topics that people are, are interested in discussing deeper that do not fit into the research channels. And there's a lot of conversation around different types of knowledge tooling mm. uh, currently. Um, so yeah, I think it, there's, there's two ways to participate, either uh, being really interested in the, uh, or three ways, I would say. One is really being interested in the kind of research or uh, themes that are discussed at Trust. Another one is being interested in the experiments that we are going to venture on in terms of like governance and collective ownership. And then third is just because you want to support us uh, and uh, become a member for that reason. And through that help uh, fund the development of our projects and uh, the maintenance of the infrastructures and the spaces we build. So I think that, that uh, uh, that's it. Um, and we want to hand over again to the uh, to the Money Lab studio, and want to thank uh, Money Lab for inviting us to be a and partner. Ella. And we wanted to thank Ella Kage for her uh, generosity uh, during this process. And uh, yeah, thank you again for inviting us. Um, have a great day, everyone. We're not sure exactly when we'll be cut off, so we're just we may just have to stay here. Yes. Um, from the YouTube, I mean our our Twitch friends. The Twitch friends. The uh, Twitch friends are used to this, so. <laughs> <sighs> uh, okay, I don't know if we're still here. We're still here.